I try to beat grocery stores at their own game, and here's why. Profits at grocery store chains are at record highs. At the same time, food prices are expected to increase by 5-7% in 2023. This means that a family of four will now spend approximately $16,200 in groceries, which is over $1,000 more compared to the previous year. This feels too much like coincidence. So I came up with a three-step plan to beat grocery stores at their own game. The first step is things to do before you go to the store. Before you head to the store, make a list. A list will keep you on track and makes you conscious of any item you are considering that is not on the list. Not having a list is the single biggest reason for overspending. As you make that list, look for sale items. Often fruits and vegetables will come on sale when the store needs to clear out shelf space. For example, my local grocery store often has mandarins on sale and special discounts on yogurt like buy two for a discounted price. Having said that, read the fine print because sometimes it will say you can buy just one for the lower price. And the best way to find these sale items is through coupons and flyers. I get flyers delivered to my mailbox every month as part of junk mail. Alternatively, there are many apps on your phone that do the same. A few that come to mind are Flip and Rebe. In terms of where to shop, choose a store that price matches. The goal here is to have a one-stop shopping experience. Walmart Supercenter is a great option that comes to mind because they do price matching. This way, you don't need to waste gas on trips to multiple stores. Just make sure that you have all the coupons on you or on your phone. Alternatively, shop at local grocery stores, especially if you live in an urban area like a city neighborhood. In addition to supporting local business, these stores are sometimes cheaper than large grocery chains because of lower overheads. Finally, don't shop hungry. You are more likely to impulse buy and deviate from your list when you shop on an empty stomach. Now on to the second step, which is things to do at the store. As you are walking into a store, pick up a basket instead of a cart. As you add more stuff to your basket, you become very conscious of the size and weight of everything. And because of this, you won't get distracted by impulse purchases. And when the basket gets too heavy, your trip will come to a natural close. The other thing you should do is buy whole produce. Pre-cut fruits, vegetables, and meat have the biggest markups. Instead, buy whole items. For example, buy whole pieces of meat with bone-in and skin-on like bone-in thighs or a whole chicken. Some stores have a meat section where you can ask the butcher to cut the meat into smaller sizes for no additional cost. You should also try to buy seasonal produce as these cost less. For example, cherries, watermelon, tomatoes, and zucchinis are summer items. They are going to cost more in the winter. Instead, try apples, pears, cabbage, and sweet potatoes in the colder months. Alternatively, consider buying frozen fruits and veggies, which can be cheaper than their fresh counterparts in some cases. I buy mixed veggies and blueberries this way. And because it's usually flash frozen, the quality of the produce is intact and keeps well in the freezer for many months. And when it comes to branded versus generic products, did you know that Kirkland Coffee is just Starbucks rebranded? This is why you should buy store brand or generic brand on certain items like oatmeal and coffee beans. It's cheaper and probably the same quality as the name brand. If you have many choices for an item, look for one with the lowest unit price. I do this with oatmeal and coffee because these are generic products. Unit price shopping also means that you don't fall victim to shrinkflation, which is a recent trend in package downsizing for the same price or higher. And don't forget to check out the lower shelf space in the grocery store. Brands pay extra to be at eye level, which equals more expensive. So check the lower shelves for cheaper options. And at the checkout counter, if available, sign up for the grocery store reward card if you haven't already. You might get members only discounts on certain items. And finally, the third step is things to do at home. Consider cutting back on meat to two or three times a week instead of daily. You can supplement by adding lentils, which are a great source of protein. And cook from scratch more often. For example, soak lentils overnight and cook to your preference. It's affordable and arguably more tasty and healthy compared to the canned version. If you have a green thumb, try growing your own herbs and vegetables. Herbs are quite easy to grow and require minimal maintenance. If you don't have a backyard or an open space, 
Used pasta sauce jars and yogurt containers can be repurposed to grow herbs on a windowsill. And finally, elevate food that is considered low bar. Instead of poo-pooing craft dinner and ramen noodles, make them into high quality meals that are tasty and nutritionally healthy by adding veggies and additional protein like a fried egg. So that's my take on grocery shopping. Let's have a chat in the comments section about any strategies you've adopted to survive the recent price increases. As always, if you found this video useful, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.